Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. In this particular tutorial, we are getting started with the chapter 3 of this particular certification. And the chapter 3 will be talking about the virtual environments which is used as a part of the automotive industry. And this chapter is called as Testing in Virtual Environments. As a part of this chapter, we have two sub-segments uh, where we'll be understanding more about what exactly the basic considerations about the test environment is and 3.2, testing in Zill test environments. So to get started with today in this tutorial, we are covering two sub-segments of the first part of it, that is testing environment in general, that is 3.1.1, motivation for test environment in the automotive development and 3.1.2, general parts of a test environment. So first of all, when you talk about the motivation for the test environment in automotive development, here we are trying to understand that how exactly we, uh, being a tester of the automotive industry, it helps you to realize that what kind of environment would be helpful. And there are certainly, there's a lot of challenges which we need to tackle and overcome. Because one side you are talking about a real-time automotive or automobile or a car, and the other side you're talking about small components which are being built, but they don't show a realistic outcomes until unless they're deployed in a real system, like a real car. So there are a lot of certain challenges which a tester can face and have to be looking forward to overcome those challenges in order to cover as much as possible and make sure, sure that safety criticalness and uh, making sure that the user or the rider is safe when they are using such components. So the tester faces a lot of challenges. For example, one hand, he is expected to start testing as early as possible to find defects early in the development process, which is one of the basic principles of testing, that if you find defects earlier in the life cycle, it is cheaper to fix, whereas if you find it later, it is complex and cost uh, involvement is also there is expensive on the other hand he needs to realistic uh, he needs a realistic environment to test the system and to find the defects that would appear in the completed product which is another important thing of course you know you don't know how exactly it behaves when it is finally deployed in a real car so the tester can solve this conflict by using suitable test environments that match the different development phases in doing so the tester can implement and execute his individual test task before completing produced or developed ECU because of you know you know being an automotive tester we all understand what uh, importance the ECU has and has all the control over there for the entire automotive and this is just the hub or the core of the car if you have something wrong we generally look forward to uh, scan the ECU in order to find the issue so yes ECU finally to complete that it requires a lot of things right which controls the entire thing but you know you have to start much earlier in the life cycle and that could be complicated sometime so by using different test environment a tester can simulate situations as well as execute test cases that would be difficult to reproduce in the actual vehicle for example short circuits and open circuits inviting hardness or overload in the network communication so that's, that's very, very important that the tester has to be very much clear that what kind of environment would be helpful at that point of time. So building up and then trying to test as much as possible much earlier in the life cycle. Additionally, here we are talking about the second segment that is general parts of a test environment. What exactly test environment comprises of when you talk about automotive testing? So for the tester to be able to perform his activities, a tester needs an environment which the which is the missing parts are simulated. For example, here uh, the environment should not just be an environment where you can just run all your test cases, but of course, there are a lot of parts which are still missing in your ECU, and you need certain kinds of like stub and drivers which will help you to complete those segments in order to complete your circuit and run and test it. Because a alone component can be tested, but if you want to test that component as a part of the system, then the other parts has to be created as hardness, right? The stubs or the dummy ones to, in order to see that the circuit completes and we get a desired output for that. This environment helps the tester to simulate the inputs of the test item and to observe their outputs and also called as point of control and point of observation. So here the point of control is generally like the input 
which you refer as like what exactly you're providing as uh, the input as uh, the current or the signal or the sensor which you're trying to feed in as an information and definitely observe their outputs which is point of observation so in automotive industries we use such generic words which is called as the point of control as input and point of observation as output in short it is also called as poc and poa According to ISO IEC IEEE 29119, a test environment consists of following parts. These are generic parts, but of course, depending on your standards, you may have something more than this uh, included as a part of the, uh, the automotive testing environment. For example, one is the hardware of the environment. For example, computer if necessary, also a real-time capable computer, test bench, development kit, etc. Software of the test environment, like operating systems, simulating softwares, environment models. Facilities of the communication, like access to network, data loggers, where you collect your outputs. Tools. There are a lot of tools which are available. Um, very commonly used as oscilloscope and much measuring tools for monitoring and all. And laboratory, which is protection from the electromagnetic radiations and noise. So you generally, you know, if you're working as an automotive tester, you would have definitely find some labs uh, in your organization where you conduct some simulation test. And definitely that test lab is going to be very soundproof and uh, magnetic proof. An important part of the test environment is the environment model, in fact. The models are an important part of the virtual test environment. They represent aspect of the real world, such as the combustion engine, transmission, vehicle, sensor, and electronic control units, or even the device or the road conditions. So here is, it's just like a model, which means that it simulates not only the parts, not only the circuit, but also simulates the real car behavior, right? It goes with some kind of operations, or you will have a robotic RC, which generally follows those activities at a structure level, not physically deployed as a real car, an expensive one rather you can have a demonstration like a model of that or rc1 remote controlled one and you see that how exactly that behaves at a very structure or basic level and of course the test environment also has different access points the tester can use these to measure and observe the test items of course you know you talk about different sensors input and various outputs from different point of view you will have such considerations to be taken into account when it comes to testing the same much earlier in the life cycle where it could be difficult to be done when the finally the production or the real car is using those components so being a tester you need to take care of all these factors before you can reach to the final release well so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below we'll be getting back to you with another tutorial soon till then Keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.